This is going to be a really basic demo of flying a drone to capture photos for photogrammetry, which is using software to generate 3D models and aerial photos and things like that from drone photos. So anyway, uh, first step, your settings. Raw photos, high shutter speed to avoid blur, um, keep your shutter speed constant, keep your ISO constant. Unless you have changing light conditions like partly cloudy, then you can do um, auto ISO, but uh, keep the, the shutter speed constant. It doesn't matter so much for what I'm doing now, which is taking photos with the drone not moving. Um, so let's see, let's go. You snap one picture. Oh, and you, uh, I usually use autofocus. Move the drone, snap another photo. And so you want to go small increments, small movements, to get as much overlap as you can. The idea is to give software a lot of information so it can align photos in space with each other and generate the 3D model. So the pattern you fly doesn't really matter um, as long as there's overlap and as long as you can keep track of where you flew. Um, and then on the map, uh, actually you can see in the lower left, you can see the, the path that you took. So again, straight down. And this is for really for generating an aerial photo or an ortho photo or an ortho mosaic. If you're doing more 3D or you're trying to get larger structures like a skyscraper or something like that, you would want to do straight down but also angled photos. So here we go, moving bit by bit, snapping photos. And you really should make sure the drone stops completely. I don't always do that. I sometimes have a little drift, but that seems to be okay. And this really is the, the basic method. This should be the first way you do it. A lot of people start with automation software that flies the drone and that's actually how I started a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And it was kind of a mistake because I didn't, I got a bunch of JPEG photos and there was always issues with white balance and exposure from the clouds and I couldn't do much correction or much or sharpening or anything like that. Um, raw is the way to go. I edit with Lightroom. You know if you're gonna do real photography like artistic photography or stuff like this like scientific f photography or uh, I guess utilitarian uh, raw is 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 important it lets you for one thing you can adjust color so like white balance can be adjusted and you can bring up shadows you can bring down highlights if you know, if the sun, even if you're, you're shooting fixed exposure, if the sun goes behind a cloud and gets dark, you can adjust your photos and they'll match pretty well. And that's been my, my experience is when the sun gets blocked by a cloud, it can be like one third the brightness or even less. So there's huge differences in exposure. But if you shoot raw, you can correct for all that. If you shoot JPEG, your, your super dark photo is stuck super dark. And so you want to, you know, keep flying, get your overlap. So I first kind of went around these buildings and now I'm going inside the buildings. Um, and then I could fly directly over them. You, you, you do have some flexibility, especially if you use Agisoft Metashape Pro. It does a really good job with relatively few photos. Other software not as flexible. Step. 
for the next thing I'm going to show is getting the angled or the oblique photos which you need for 3D reconstruction so you will uh, angle, try to not do too high an angle unless you're getting a, like a vertical object like a wall, skyscraper, tall house, tree, something like that but for kind of low squat buildings like this an angle, a slight angle is good maybe like 45 degrees at the most try to avoid getting the horizon in the shot because if you if you have too much landscape it makes it harder to process at least with Agisoft I mean it still works but uh, it's better just to not have extraneous stuff but if you do I mean it's it's fine either way so you move a little bit a little bit at a time and you kind of have a little bit more flexibility you, you don't need as much overlap because when you're flying straight down you collected the the ones with the with the super amount of overlap I just realized I'm I'm capturing um, another cluster of buildings that weren't in my original group and the swimming pool also wasn't in my original group of photos so I'll have to reshoot the straight down but that's okay So now I'm going to get a few more oblique shots and then go back to straight down and capture some more and you don't want to fly directly over people that is illegal so I'm offset from the pool you don't need to fly over objects usually to get a decent especially if the drone is pretty pretty high up so that pool is going to be perfect even though I didn't fly directly over So I'm going to fill in the, actually it's a whole set of straight down shots. So switch to the map view and makes it easy. And you have to remember the those curve lines are from when I was doing the orbit. So got to remember which ones are the ones you did straight down. Got a little bit of overlap. Another thing is when you're doing buildings, you want to get a lot of shots between the buildings and that way so the image from the from the camera on the drone to, if an object is off center you're getting the side of it and that actually helps with the 3D so if you fly between two buildings you're getting a bit of image from each of those buildings so that helps with the 3D um, if they're real close it's, it's not going to be great but again you fill in with those angled shots and you fly your orbit and you get a bunch of different angles and usually it, it, it ends up coming out okay and it, the more you practice the bet the more it makes sense or the more you internalize what you need to do I always try to get objects that I can find um, coordinates on like either I, I mean I guess most people use GPS pretty much everyone uses GPS but um, I'll sometimes get coordinates off of existing aerial photos. If you have access to like pictometry data or like LIDAR data from your local government or your state government, that is great. And in Hawaii, we have a lot of LIDAR available. So you can totally find features um, on the aerial, fo on aerial photos like, um, like the pictometry I have access to 
It's actually available to the public from uh, the local government here on Maui. And then the LiDAR for the elevations of your control points. And so I'll do another video where I show the control points. Or maybe I'll just add on to this one. And the whole pho photogrammetry process. But for now, just the flying. And you're, you're also not allowed to fly over cars. So if you're doing a road, offset yourself a bit. Whoops. Ah. Uh, Oh, just barely missed that car, so. One thing that makes it easy for me is, is keeping the drone pointed north if you're doing this start-stop method. So there we go, filling in a little bit more of the surroundings. You always want to get more than your, your subject area. Now what I'm going to show is how to capture photos while the drone is moving. So I'll do another part of this condo complex. Um, and I switched the drone to cinematic mode. And so I'm going to fly at that slow speed. It, it, on the Air 2S, it's limited to 5 meters per second, which is pretty slow. You don't get much motion blur. And then the other thing to be aware of is rolling shutter. Because of the way the shutter reads out, it's one pixel at a time. So while you are moving, the, the camera on the drone is reading out the, the, the sensor. It's like scanning the sensor. So you end up with like a warp, kind of a trapez or a skewed distortion. More so at higher speeds. So really at 5 meters per second it's not an issue, but you still want to keep your speed consistent and only take photos flying forward. Or, or backward or whatever just it has to be the constant direction so that when you apply like in Agisoft there's rolling shutter correction so it's gonna apply the same values for that correction to every photo so you need to be consistent like so make sure the drone is actually going five meters per second or close to it when you snap each picture sometimes if there's wind it's hard to be consistent See, I'm rotating the drone, not snapping any pictures. But now, as soon as I start flying forward and I reach that 5 meters per second, I'll snap the pictures. So snap the first one. Snap another one. Because I do it manually, I, I usually get more overlap front to back. Like a lot of overlap front to back. But that actually helps. It seems to help with the 3D reconstruction. And so again, the, the pattern doesn't really matter. You just need a lot of overlap. So you can shoot these zigzags. You can, you can if the wind is, is pushing your drone one way, you can wait a second and then fly back and recontinue what you're doing or what have you. So again, rotate the drone, but don't snap any pictures while you're doing it, because you don't want to confuse the software. And yeah, as soon as I reach, well, close to, to 5 meters per second, start snapping. Uh oh, low battery. Battery level is low.